Here are all the questions that we are gonna tackle in this video, but I'm gonna split them up over different pages just so we have a bit more space. So let's begin. We are given two blocks that are connected by a rope and we know, okay, so pretty much all the information that they mention here is just on the diagram. Then they said a force of 55. I'm just trying to see if there's anything that's not mentioned. Okay, this is important. The three kilogram block experiences a frictional force of five newtons and then the coefficient of kinetic friction for the eight kilogram is 0 0.16. So that is things that are not on the diagram. So we do need to make sure we don't forget that. The first question says state Newton's second law. Now, before we get into the definition of Newton's second law, let's go to Newton's second law equation, which is F net equals to MA. Let's get A by itself. That would say uh, F net over M. And from that, that will help you to remember what the definition is. Um, I'll quickly show you something. It says that the acceleration is directly, whenever it's on top, we say directly proportional to the net force and inversely, because that's at the bottom, proportional to the mass. So it's directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass. But now let me go get the proper definition for you. So there's the proper definition. When a resultant or a net force acts on an object, it accelerates. This acceleration is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. All right, so that's it. Next question, draw a free body diagram of all the forces acting on the eight kilogram, and it's for five marks. So that means we are gonna have to look at five different things on that free body diagram. So let's put a little dot. Now, there's always gonna be a vertical gravity, so we can say Fg over there. There's gonna be a normal force, so we can say Fn. There's gonna be a tension in this rope. There's a frictional force. Oh, and that's important, something I forgot to make mention of is that they tell us that the system of blocks moves to the right. Some of you might say, yeah, but Kevin, that's obvious because this arrow is pointing to the right. But that's not true. If this box is very heavy, let's say this box is 50 kilograms, then it could be heavy enough to cause this whole system to go down the slope even though there is a 55 newtons trying to slow it down. So we do need to make sure about that. But here they tell us that we are going to the right, so we're going like that. Okay, so because of that, we can say that there is a friction force in this direction over here, so I'm just gonna say F like that. And then there is an applied force over here, so I'm just gonna show it like that. And of course, these aren't the only labels. Um, for example, some, some you, you're allowed to also use just N over here for tension force, you can literally just say T. Uh, for this one, you can say W. For F applied, you can literally just say F. So they are different labels, okay? And then another thing is that some learners would prefer to break this up into components. And so what that would look like is the following. You would not have this one, and you would rather have um, F in the X direction, and then you would have an upwards force, because this one goes to the right and up, and you would say F in the Y direction. Okay. But I don't like to use the component method. I mean, sometimes I do. I'm lying. Sometimes I do do it. Uh, but I think for this one, I'm just going to keep it as something like that. All right. So there's the five marks. One, two, three, four, five. If you decided to break it up into components, then you can't say that that's gonna be five and six. You only count one mark for all of that. I looked at this next question and I'm gonna redo the free body diagram, but I'm rather gonna use the components. I actually do prefer using components. Um, usually when it's on an incline, which for this one it is, I always use components. For this one, I sometimes use components, sometimes don't, um, but I'm gonna use components now. So we're gonna have our normal force. Like we said just now, we're gonna have our friction force, our tension force. Some people just say T for tension. I'll actually just do it like that, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then what else did we have? We had gravity. And then I'm gonna use component forces for the force. So for force applied, you can actually just say F, you can say FA, but I'm just gonna say F in the X direction and then F 
in the y direction. Okay, so there's our different forces. Now, they want us to calculate the kinetic friction force for the eight kilogram. So we know that kinetic friction can be calculated using this over here. So we need the coefficient, and they did give us that. Okay, I highlighted it on the previous page, but they told us that the coefficient of friction for the eight kilogram is 0 0.16. So we already have this parameter. Now, a lot of learners make mistakes when it comes to normal force. They think that the normal force is always the same as gravity. That is only true if there are no other forces at an angle. As soon as there is a force at an angle, they are not the same. And I'll prove it to you by looking at your free body diagram. Look at those three forces. They are all going to be, they need to be balanced so that the object doesn't go up and the object also doesn't go down. So these two forces going upwards, when you add them together, they should be the same as the gravitational force. See that? All the forces going upwards must be the same as all of the forces going downwards. So the normal force we don't know what that is. If we had to work out the y component of this force, you would make a little triangle over here, and this would be the y component over here. This hypotenuse is 55, and so you would use the normal trigonometry like sin, cos, or tan. For that one over there, we're using this angle. We're looking for the opposite, and we have the hypotenuse. So we're gonna use sin. So you would say sin 15 equals to the opposite, over the hypotenuse, and if you had to work out y, it should be 55 multiplied by sin 15, and then I'm not gonna round off, so that's gonna be 14.2350. I'm gonna keep four decimal places, and we could say up, so I'm gonna fill that in over here, and then gravity is always the mass multiplied by gravity, which is 9.8, and so if you had to get the normal force, you should get 64.165, I'm also not gonna round off. So now I can use my friction formula, and I can say the coefficient, which is 0 0.1, whoopsie, 0 0.16, multiplied by 64.165, and that gives us 10.27. Now we can round off, because that's the final answer. 10.27, so we must just remember that for the next question. So here's the next one, or the last one. It says, determine the tension in the string. Oh yes, and this one was for six marks. I forgot to write that one down. And I also wrote down the fact that the friction here, we now have that, and then the free body diagram. So it's very, um, well, actually, let's see. So this is the free body diagram of the three kilogram object, I mean, sorry, of the eight kilogram object. So if you've watched any of my videos with Newton's second law where we have two objects connected, you should know what I'm about to say right now. There are two unknown variables in this entire question, because if we use Newton's second law, which is F net equals to MA, we know that all of these forces would go into the F net part if we were only using this object, right? So we, we, we know the friction, we know the X component of the force, but we wouldn't know the tension, so that's an unknown variable and we also don't know the acceleration. They didn't tell us somewhere here that we're moving at a constant velocity or something like that. So we have two unknown variables. So, as I said, if you've watched any of my videos, we are about to do the same thing that we always do. And how does that go again? We make two free body diagrams of both objects. So let's do that quickly. We need to do a free body diagram for the three kilogram. So for the three kilogram, it would have a normal force that goes perpendicular to the surface. So I'm actually gonna do it over here. So there would be a normal force going like this. There would be a tension in the rope going upwards. Then there would be friction. They did tell us that there was friction, remember? They said that the three kilogram experiences a friction of five Newtons. So we can do that. Now, what some learners would like to do now is they'll just put gravity going downwards like that. But if you've watched my lessons or if you see the way I do it, I like to use the component method instead. So I'd rather break up the gravity into its perpendicular component 
and it's parallel components. Why do I do that? It's just because it helps me with my calculations. It makes the calculations much easier to understand. So I'm gonna use gravity perpendicular. So I'm gonna say F G perpendicular. And then we're gonna have a parallel gravity. People always ask me um, if parallel gravity sometimes acts up the slope. My answer is that it always acts down the slope. Even if your object is moving downwards or if it's moving upwards, it doesn't make a difference. Parallel gravity always acts down the slope. Okay, so I'm just gonna make the circle a little bit bigger so I can fit the friction and I can fit the, uh, what did we say? Oh, FG parallel. Right, so there we go. So what's our next step? So we do a free body diagram on both objects. We've now done that, which is great. Then we're gonna use F net equals to MA on both of those objects. So this is the part where I would then normally um, divide my page into two equal halves. And then I'll just do it for the three kilogram and for the eight kilogram. And I'll use F net equals to MA. So I'm gonna go F net equals to MA. And which direction do I want is positive? Well, this is, the, we're looking at this object. So we're moving up the slope like that. So I'm gonna say up that slope like that is positive. And then I just look at all the forces in the, in the slope's direction. There they are. This is why I don't like to use gravity as going down. I rather like to use the components because then I can just say that these are the three forces that I need to use. So all I literally say now is I can say tension force, which is positive because it's acting up the slope, minus friction, minus FG parallel. How easy is that? Because these are the three forces that we're looking at. And then I just make that equal to MA. Then I go fill in as much as I can. So the tension, I don't know. The friction force on that object is five. Gravity parallel, remember the formula for gravity parallel is mg sin theta. So I'm gonna say minus three kilograms times 9.8 times sin of the slope, which is sin of 30 equals to three A. So the two unknowns as per normal is gonna be the T and the A. I'm just gonna neaten everything up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of these together. So it's minus five, minus three times 9.8 times sin 30. So that's minus 19.7 and that's equal to 3a. So there's our first equation. We can't go any further. Now we're going to go do the exact same thing with f net equals to ma. I mean, sorry, with the 8 kilogram. So here we're going to say f net equals to ma. Now this object's going like that. So I'm going to say right is positive. And now it's so easy. Look at my free body diagram. I just, I just use those three forces. But if you had some weird force at an angle here, then it's weird, right? So that's why I prefer components because then I know that I just need to use the X component. So I'm gonna say FX, because that's positive, minus the friction force, minus the tension force, because they are acting in the negative direction. Some of you are like, yeah, but Kevin, in this one you said tension was positive, bro. Yeah, but for different objects, tension can make the thing go faster, and for other objects, it can make it go slower. Okay, so, and then we're gonna make that equal to M, a. There we go. So in the X component, we need to go use trigonometry here. So if we're looking for the X component and we know the hypotenuse, then we would use cos. So we would say cos 15 equals to the adjacent, which is X, over 55. And if you had to get X by itself, you would get 55 cos 15. And if you had to work that out, I'm gonna keep three, uh, four decimals, sorry. So that's gonna give us 53.1259, okay? And you could say to the right. And then, yep, that's it. So we're gonna say 53.1259 minus the friction force that we calculated earlier, which was 10.27 minus tension, which we don't know, equals to the mass of that object, which is eight and A. What I'm gonna do now is just put these two numbers together. Not gonna round off, so that's 42.8559 minus T equals 
8a. And there's our second equation. So now we're just going to link this one and this one simultaneously. Now you can do that however you like. What some learners like to do is they like to get the tension forces by itself for both of them and then they make the two equations equal. But then what other li learners like to do is they rather they get one of them by itself, like they'll get this one by itself, and then they'll plug that into this one. It doesn't matter. You do whatever you feel comfortable with, with simultaneous, but obviously we must get the same answers at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to get the t by itself. So for example, if this is equation number one, this is equation number two, I'm going to quickly re rearrange equation number one to become t equals to 3a plus 19.7, and then I can call that number three. And then I'm going to substitute number 3 into number 2. So I'm going to sub 3 into 2. So we're going to end up with 42.8559 minus. Then please, please, please use brackets. Because especially that minus, it's going to make things wrong if you don't use brackets. So then you're going to say 3a plus 19.7. And that's going to be equal to 8 a. You see, now we only have A's. And so then we can say 42.8559 minus 3A minus 19.7. A lot of learners will get that part wrong because they don't put a bracket, so it becomes plus 19.7. So if that's what you're doing, don't worry. It's a small mistake, but it is a very popular mistake. It's something that I see a lot. And that's equal to 8A. And so now I'm just going to carry on up here. So I'm going to minus these two values. So we have 23.1559 minus 3a equals to 8a. I'm going to take the 3a over to the other side. So it becomes 11a. Then I'm going to get a by itself by dividing by 11. I'm not going to round off. I get 2.1050. Uh, meters per second to the minus two. Then what I can do is I can take that answer and I can substitute it over here, for example, to get the tension force. So I can then say that the tension force is going to be three multiplied by 2.1050 plus 19.7. And that gives us 26.02. 